Hey everybody, how are we? Six people waiting, sorry that I'm a little bit late. I had a phone call. Seven people, awesome. We're gonna give people a couple minutes to uh, get in here. Um, I'm really excited for today. Uh, you're going to need about eight quarters or coins. You're going to need two chairs and a towel. Um, and an open mind as well would be great because we're gonna have some, um, we're gonna have some fun. I came up with some uh, interesting drills. I'm trying to give us the feeling of climbing without actually climbing. So um, yeah, I'll let you guys grab that stuff. Two chairs, a bunch of quarters, I'm using eight of them, and a dish towel. Um, I'm also gonna put on music for myself. As always, is if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. Uh, email them to me, jacob at adventurerock.com or direct message me on Instagram at Jacob D. Bach. I'm always happy to help all of you. Let's see, it's currently 6.03. We're gonna wait about two more minutes before we begin. This is uh, just like my footwork one. This is a little bit more technique focus than what it is fitness focus. However, I'm sure you're gonna work up a little bit of a sweat. So make sure to have some water with you as well. It's a beautiful Sunday out there. Also, let me know who's here. Put your name in the chat. I love when people show up. There's some people that are like at every single, excuse me, every single one of them, and it's awesome. I love that. Let's see. All right, one more minute, and then we're going to start. Like I said, two chairs, one dish towel, eight quarters, and make sure to have some water, too. Remember. All right, and probably about 30, 20 seconds, whenever it becomes 2.05, that's when we're gonna start. Oh, hey Ezra, how are you, buddy? All right, everybody, it's 2.05, which means we are going to start. Um, today, how I broke this down is we're going to have three different, well, four different sections. We're gonna have a warm up first. We always have to warm up. But then we're gonna have three climbing sections, okay? We're gonna have a slab section. We're gonna have a vert section. And then we're going to have an overhang section. Um, so, the idea is these drills are there to simulate different moves that we might do on those terrains of climbing. Um, we have all these really great classes. We have my strength class on Tuesday. We have my power class on Thursday. And we have all these yoga classes. And they're there to keep our like fitness and mobility up. But I, in this class, want us to keep our movement up. Climbing is a movement and a skill-based sport. Um, and that's what we are here to do today. We're here to get that movement in our body, even if we don't have a climbing wall at our house. So we are gonna start by warming up. Everybody can go ahead and stand up if you haven't yet. And we are gonna do, uh, we're really gonna do four things for warm up. So we're gonna do five reps of each of them. We're gonna start with my favorite, which is the posture scoops. So we're gonna start with prayer hands. Well, first we gotta start by checking our posture, right? So our feet are facing forward, parallel with us, corkscrewing into the ground ever so slightly, slight bend in the knees. Remember that we don't want that tailbone sticking out, so we're elongating it down, we're trying to get those hips towards the rib cage. The rib cage stays closed for this. The navel gets pulled to the uh, it pulled to the spine, engaging that core. And we're going to try to correct those climber shoulders sooner or later. So we don't want them hunched forward. This needs to open up, but just because we open up doesn't mean that this comes up too. 
So open those nice and wide. Keep all of this tight string on the top of the head, pulling you up to the ceiling. That should elongate the spine. We're going to take our hands into a prayer form, and we're going to push them really tight together. And then we're going to jet them out in front of us, keeping pushing them together. Make sure the head doesn't go forward or come back. You put them above your head. Flip your hands so your hands come like this. They flip. And then we scoop down to our sides, making sure that that posture stays the entire time. So we're going to do five of those. We can start right now. Check that posture. And here comes five. But push it together. Make sure to breathe. Four more. The big thing that when we come up like this, we don't want our uh, shoulders all the way by our head. So make sure to have those nice and down. Two more. And one more. Make it count. Nice. Go ahead and shake that out. The next we're going to do is our horizontal shoulder rotations. So we're getting a nice stretch through the bicep, through the tricep. We're going to keep our hands out to our side. And when we have them at our side, remember that they're not forward, they're not backwards. We want them right next to our shoulders. Your right hand, your thumb, is going to uh, rotate forward, bringing your palm up to the ceiling. And your left thumb is going to go backwards, bringing that left palm as close to the ceiling as possible. Make sure you're in a nice T. You don't want it down here or all the way up here. You want it in T. Check both sides. Nice. And then we're just going to rotate it nice and easy. Just like that. And when we do this, don't bring your shoulder all the way forward. We're just rotating it. Everybody's going to be at different parts. Let's do five of those. That's going to be ten total because two of them count as one. Two more. One more. Really get a deep stretch in there. Nice. And the next one we're gonna do is my favorite one, Cossack Lunges. Um, everybody is at a different point of uh, hip mobility, and that is okay. I like to go nice and wide apart on these, leaning over to one side and letting that heel come up and then i'm going to pull with this heel i'm not pushing with this leg there's going to be a little bit of a push but i'm really focusing on pulling with that heel that same thing that we do with heel hook right nice now if your hips aren't that mobile that's okay if your hamstrings are really tight today you can come a little bit more forward or a little bit more together rather and you can lean to that right side bending this and then just go ahead and lean into it. Really feel that stretch through here. You can even try to tap your toe. So let's do 10 of those total, five on each side. It's all about balance, coordination, really digging that heel into the ground, feeling that stretch. Two more on both sides. And one more both side. Make it count. Nice. Whew. Man, it feels good to wake up. Uh, the next one that we're going to do is a uh, downward dog push up. So we're going to get into the downward dog form. We're going to uh, go into a plank form from the downward dog and do a push-up. This is how they're going to look all together. If you can't do a push-up, that is okay. We're all at different spots. Try to go down or just hold that plank with a little bit of a bent arm as much as you can. So this is what they're going to look like completely. For these, remember, we're trying to chuck that chuck, kind of tuck that chin in. So when we go down into the push-up, you don't want to have your head coming down like this. You want it completely nice and up, straight pulling it forward. We're going to be coming back to this plank formation when we get into our vert section. Um, so remember, rib cage closed, belly button to navel, squeeze the glutes, drive through the heels, open up those shoulders,
string on the top of the head and make all of it count. We're gonna do five of these. So let's start in that downward dog. Don't let that head drop. And here we go. Two more. Nice. Great job, everybody. Uh, go ahead and grab some water. I'm going to talk to all of you for a moment. So the first thing that we are going to be working on for our climbing movement portion of this is our slab section. So when we think about slab, right, if, if this is, or if you're a non-climber out there, that's totally okay. I'm going to be using some climbing terms. Slab is just like a nice flat wall, or maybe a little bit more inclined as well. Um, slab is notoriously balancey. It's a lot about being on the tips of your toes or smearing, or using just the ball of the foot. In comp climbing a lot or in indoor climbing, we see a lot of like big volume problems on slab, a lot of stemming, a lot of pushing. So today we are going to be using chairs. Um, to simulate those things. So you're gonna need two chairs. If you don't have those, go ahead and grab them now. Um, if any of this is like too hard or too difficult, that is absolutely okay. If you feel a little bit uncomfortable doing it, that's all right as well. You can always take away the chairs and you can just do them standing on the ground and work your way up to the chair. Personally, I miss having a little bit of fun on the wall. So I've been climbing all over my chairs pretty much nonstop. Um, the first drill that we are going to do is something called perching. We see it a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot in calm climbing. So let's see, I'm going to use this chair right here for it. Perching is um, pretty much exactly what it sounds like. It's when we bring that foot and we really sink onto it and we have it directly below us. So a perch might look like this. Right, we're just leaning on, we're leaning onto that foot and we're perched up and then we come back down. Great. Um, it's a little bit tricky, it's all about balance. I actually like doing this with the back of the chair in front of me. The reason being is because it makes me simulate a wall a little bit more. And I get nice and close to it like this. Let's see. There we go. And get nice and close to the chair. My hips are open wide. And then I'm able to rock back down. So what we are going to do to work on our accuracy as well, we're going to take two of those quarters. Boom, quarter one, quarter two. I'm a rich man. Um, we're gonna put them right next to our chair, all right? On both sides of it, one on both sides. Our toe, when we start, we're gonna have our big toe on the left one, right leg, just the toes. We're gonna try to focus on just the toes, not a flat foot. We're going to leave that quarter on the ground and look for the next quarter, just the big toe. I somehow got it. And then we're gonna perch over off of it. Um, if that's a little bit too difficult or a little bit too tricky, that's okay. One thing that you can do is, right, when we're perching over, you can grab underneath the chair and pull up on it. And that's gonna give you a little bit more help with the balance. So we are going to try this probably three or four times going both ways, all right? Um, feel free to make it more difficult on yourself. Feel free to make it a little bit more easy on yourself if you're feeling it. Play around with it. All of this movement, just like climbing, is made to be varied up. Um, if you have any ideas or questions, comments, concerns, queries, kudos, just go ahead and put it in the chat box. Um, so here we go. Let's try going three times, three or four times both ways.
Focusing on just staying on the toes. And we're going to go ahead, put that first leg up there. Perching onto it. Oh, man, that's a difficult one today. Where's my quarter? Where's my quarter? There it is. And we're slowly coming off of it and matching. That's one. All right, that's one each way. This next one, I'm going to actually try and do, um, I'm going to pretend there's like a little bit of a crimp underneath my chair. I'm going to pull up on that and see how that goes. My quarter moved on me, it got close to my chair. Let's play around with it for a little bit more. You can also try and do a drop knee going this way. Yeah. Oh, I'm trying to balance so hard. Nice. I'm just going to keep it going. Here we go. <laughs> it's okay to mess up. That's the fun part about this. How's everybody doing out there? Anybody got feedback on that drill? Oh, okay. I'm going to remove my quarters. One and two. And I'm going to take away my chair for this next one. And uh, we're going to do a single leg deadlift, which will look like this. We're standing on one foot. We're balancing, right? So we're going to open up our hands, facing forward, and we're rolling the shoulders back, checking that posture again. We're going to get one foot off the ground, and we're just going to lean forward as much as we can. It's okay to have a bend in that knee, and then come back up. That's a normal single leg deadlift. We're going to add a twist to it while our foot is back, all right? So it'll look like this. Ooh. I'm not engaging my core. There we go. We're going to do five of those on both sides. You guys can see that I was wobbling back and forth. It's because I was really relaxed with my core there, and I wasn't too focused. Use your intention on this. Really find the focus on it. Um, this is leading us into another balance drill. So the more we focus on this now, the better that next drill is going to be. So let's go ahead and get that right foot off the ground. And we're going to lean back with it. And open up. Tickle the ground a little bit. Bring it in, and then we're going to come in. All right, let's do four more on that side. In dance, we, um, in dance, we would have everything nice and straight, and I find it easier with a pointed foot and back, right? So this is called an arabesque. And then we're able to open, oh, whoa! Start talking to this at the same time. And then we can bring it forward. Um, whew, let's see, two more times.
And here we go one more time. Nice. Go ahead and shake out that left leg. Wow, I got my left leg sore. All right, we're going to do it on our right side. Go ahead and get their hand, that hand, those hands ready. Move this up because I'm cutting off my head a little bit. All right, here we go. We're going to take that left leg up. Lean forward. Engage that core. Find the string on the top of the head pulling you forward. Open up. And nice. Four more. Here we go. Three more. I'm trying to make this look as graceful as possible. <laughs> I say as graceful as possible and immediately fall. Two more. Here we go. Today's all about playing around, you guys. <laughs> Man, my right side is not as good as I thought it was going to be. Here we go. One more time. Yep, there we go. I know what I have to work on now. <laughs> That's for sure. How are you all doing out there? All right. You guys are having fun. It's a quiet group today. Normally people are blowing up the chat feed. The next one that we are going to do are called standing glides. Um... It's like a traversing movement on a slab, right? So a lot of times on a slab, we have to be really balanced and grab a hold that's lower. It's like one of those weird, you need to, you need to do some more yoga to keep the balance up. It's true. I do need to do more yoga. Um, I also need about five less pins in my right ankle. That would be great. Um, where was I? Oh, it, in uh, slab climbing, it's one of the only times that we have like a lower hold that we need to go to more often. Um, so we're gonna work on that a little bit. And the way we're gonna do that, we're gonna have a chair directly in front of us, okay? And then in the description for this, it said to grab a book that you don't mind standing on. So if you all have one, my roommate's very nice and is letting me borrow one of his. Um, Go ahead and grab like a hardcover book. Anything will do that's around this size. Um, you're gonna put it in front of the chair and you're just gonna stand with both feet on it with that chair as close as possible, all right? So this chair is mimicking a wall. Honestly, if you have like an open wall by you, this is uh, it's way better to do this there. Um, I have a table and a fireplace and all sorts of things. I don't really have the room for it. Um, but this is for you guys. So go ahead and either find that wall or a chair, grab that book and just stand on it with your heels up off the ground using that book. And just like that same motion that we did before, we're gonna stand on just our right foot and we're gonna lean forward as much as you can without running into the chair. And then we're gonna meet it and come back. And then we're gonna go to the left side and do the same thing going that way. Um, let's see, I'm actually gonna face backwards for this one. Gives me a little bit more room too. All right, everybody, I'm gonna grab a little bit of water. Let's do, um, how about this? Let's do about four of these total to each side and take it really slow with a lot of control. So four total to each side, extremely controlled, okay? Um, let's see if I can live up to my own expectation. 
<laughs> Here we go. Four total. Using that book, not letting the heel touch on the ground. Make sure to not run into that chair or wall, whatever you're using. Next, I'm gonna move my chair a little bit more forward. Here we go. Two more, one each side. Man, let me know how challenged you guys are with this or if this is too easy. Oh. I got one more, I don't know about you guys. Nice, how is that for all of you? I find it that when my leg comes up, uh, when I'm leaning my opposite leg coming up, the more I, the more I point my foot and elongate it out, <laughs> okay, we've been working so hard on it. Um, the more I point my foot and really elongate my leg, straighten it, the better my balance is. So instead of focusing on bending it and kind of wobbling all over the place, the more I engage, the better that is for me. It could be just me. Go ahead and mess around with it. If you have a way that you prefer to like control it, but my balance is terrible too, especially doing this one. It's all right. We're all, we are all training right now. We're all in mandatory training session. We might not have a wall, but we got a book to stand on. We got chairs to climb in front of. Um, cool. The next one is only going to use a chair, a quarter, and a towel. All right. So it's going to use three things. Maybe not just. Um, so we are going to take your book and go to the side. Here is the one quarter that you're going to need. And I'm going to switch out chairs because this one has a towel on it. What's going to happen is you're going to put this quarter next to the chair. All right. So directly next to it, your big toe goes on it. Your towel goes above your head. So let's see, maybe I need to back up a smidge. Here we go. So the quarter goes next to the chair. Your big toe goes on that quarter and your right foot is going to go onto um, the chair. So I'm gonna let you push off a little bit with this leg but I really want you to find that control in the leg that's on the chair. This towel goes above your head as if you have two climbing holds above you, okay? And as we go up, as we stand up with this leg, you're going to pull down, keeping the towel super taut, coming down like this. So we have a climbing motion, right? Here we go, and then we can come back down, but really control that towel again. Hopefully you landed back on that quarter. I landed right next to it. Um, so let's see, let's do three of those on both legs. All right, here we go. First one, nice and taut above us. Make sure that everything is nice and closed in. If we were on the wall itself, right? If there's a wall right here and we're pulling on it, if our hips were to come forward, if our chest was to open up, if our butt was sticking back, we'd be off the wall in a moment. So let's use our imagination, our creativity, and also our intention. So here we go, three of them. And you look where my quarter is, there we go. Two more on that leg.
finally get the quarter. And one more on this leg. Oh, I missed my quarter that time. That's all right. Let's go ahead and switch sides. Three on that leg as well. I told you guys this is going to be a little bit of a weirder, a weirder workout today. This technical practice. We're using our imagination. We're using our creativity. We're making climbing out of household items, but that's okay. All right, I'm getting my right big toe on that quarter next to my chair. And then everybody knows that the quarter is supposed to symbolize like a precise foothold that we're using. Um, let's go ahead, stand on those toes, towel above our head nice and taut. Let's pull up. In, aim for that quarter again. It flipped right over my toe. <laughs> Two more on that leg. Keep that toe nice and taut. And use precision, use intention, accuracy. I don't know if you guys are doing this on carpet, but my quarter keeps flipping. All right, and last one, here we go. There we go. Feather and flip. Awesome job, everybody. And that wraps up our slab portion of it. We're on to our vert section next. I see that we have a bunch of new people that joined us. Feel free to join in. Um, we're kind of just getting into our first section. We did a slab section, and now we're getting into our vertical section, all right? So for this, uh, the slab one, we used a chair, and it was, like, very balancing. For this vert one, we're going to be on our um, – we're going to be uh, facing the ground a lot, so on all fours. We are going to use two chairs for this one. And let me see. That is it for that. So you're going to need – for this one in total, the vertical section, you're going to need uh, all the quarters that you have. So I'm using eight of them because I want one for each finger. You'll see why, or one for each finger and a thumbs. You'll see why in just a moment. And you're gonna need both chairs for this one. So um, cool. I'm gonna go ahead and get set up. The chairs can be put to the side for a moment as well as your quarters. I'm gonna grab just a smidge of water. All right, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're just gonna hold a plank, okay? And when I say a plank, I don't mean us just kind of hanging out. A plank is fully engaged. That's where we make a lot of uh, mistakes with it. If we're truly engaging our core, we need to bring that navel and pull it back. There's a spring, a string on the back of it, and we need to pull it towards the spine, right? We're closing the rib cage, opening up these shoulders, squeezing our glutes, those are our butt muscles, and we're driving through our heels. And the most important one that I want you all to focus on, maybe it's not the most important, but it's my big one, is not letting that chin sink down. Because all of us are walking around with our phones like this all the time, especially in uh, self-isolation and social distancing. And let's really try to correct that. And so a proper plank form, again, we're driving through our heels. We're squeezing our butt, navel bringing into the spine, closing the rib cage. I corkscrew my hands a little bit because that helps with my shoulders. And there's a string right on the crown of my head right here that's pulling me forward. Every part of your body should be fully engaged. And we're gonna hold that for about 30 to 45 seconds. Let me grab my phone to time. All right, go ahead and get into the form. I'm gonna start the timer. Here we go, and make sure that your hands aren't in front of you. I want them right under your shoulders as well. Inhale. 
Engage every part of you. Halfway there. Awesome. Great job, go ahead and shake those wrists out. I know they can be a little intense on your wrists. All right, so we are going to start by uh, just getting our brain going, right? For these, we need to pretend like the floor is our climbing wall. So picture it with your favorite holds all over the place. We are going to be in the plank formation for about three or four of these. Okay, the first one that we are going to do is, um, let me see, do, do, do. so we're gonna get into that plank form, let me get on the angle so you guys can see. Plank form, we're going to do a toe tap out, bringing it back in, hand out, I'm sorry, hand up, hand out, and in. All right, so for these, we are building up what we are doing. Um, so this is kind of like our first level. We're gonna be doing five on both sides. So foot, hand, hand is one. Here we go, everybody. We're gonna have fun, okay? In that plank form, and right foot out, tap it out gently. Hand goes up. Back in, hand goes out, back in. I'm switching over to my left side. And left foot goes out, taps with intention. Right hand, or left hand goes up, and left hand goes out. And now we're doing our right. So right foot tap out, hand goes up, hand goes out. Left foot tap, hand goes up, hand goes out, right foot tap, hand goes up, hand goes out, left foot tap, hand goes up, hand goes out, Ooh, two more. Right foot. Up. And out. Left foot. Up. Out. Last one on both sides. You guys got it. Right foot. Up. Out. Left foot, up, and out. Whew. I lied to you all. I'm sweating. <laughs> I said you guys weren't going to sweat today, and I uh, may have led you down the wrong path there. Whew. How was that one for you guys? I really need feedback on this movement one, because um, this is kind of the one that I'm using a lot of creativity to develop. So any feedback is good. I'll tell you that I feel like a little bit pumped after that one, which is a cool feeling to feel. I haven't felt that in a while. Definitely doing that one again. Awesome, Eden. Sweet. I love that. Um, whew. Now I got my core going. You like that one? Thank you, Alicia. Awesome. Um, for the next one that we are doing, we are going to need eight quarters, Buttons, they can be pennies, whatever you want. Um, honestly, using the, like a smaller coin is probably a, going to be a little bit of better training for this. What's going to happen is that uh, you are going to have one coin for each of your main fingers, not your thumb, your four fingers. And you're going to put them, so what I would do is test. Wherever you're doing your plank, Figure out where your like longest reach is. So I can see that mine is all the way up here. I'm putting four coins next to each other. 
I think you guys can figure out what's going to happen. And I'm going to put four coins over here for my left hand. And I'm going to uh, I'm going to use a phrase, and I hope you guys know what I mean by this. But the adventure rock pose. Um, talking about the logo, like this one right here. So to me, it always looks like a person doing this. I was I was caught off guard by that balance. Um, we're gonna get into that pose, and then we're gonna drag the quarters in to the center of our plank. All right. So it'll look like this. We're in the plank, my right foot comes up, my right arm reaches to the quarters. I push as hard as I can. I might even full crimp them. Oh, I lost two of them. <laughs> All right, so I can figure out that my back two weren't as engaged. So it's easy to take these quarters and just kind of like slide them easy along the surface, especially on my carpet. But I want you to pretend like you're holding onto a hold as hard as you can on this. And we're clawing into the floor and pulling into it. All right. So go ahead and get that set up if you haven't yet. Try it a couple times. You can even like move the location if you want to put them out to the side and pull them in that way. If you want to go over, like maybe if you're in the pint and you want to pull over this way and bring them in on an angle, it is all up to you. So go ahead and play around with that for a little bit. I'm going to give you all. Let's see, I'm gonna give you all about two minutes to play around with this one. If I'm going too fast or if you all need more time, that's all right. It's Sunday, I got nowhere to be. Um, do -do -do -do. I'm gonna give myself two minutes and do that plank formation and go ahead and just play around so that leg comes up. Oh man. And pull. Oh. Whew. I keep noticing that my, I, I, it's hard for me to engage all of my fingers at the same time. Whew. Try to keep that butt down too. I know that it's going to be uh, kind of ideal for us to kind of like scoop up into it, but I really want you to have that butt all the way down, nice flat body. Pretend that you're trying to hug the wall as much as you can. You might even bend, if you like, if you're pretty good with your arms, you can even bend your arm if you want and then pull into it, almost like doing a push-up. Um, we're kind of warming up our hands a little bit too here. This is, uh, this is a fun time. Like I said, we're, we're getting a little bit outside the box and that's okay. I always lose one or two, what a bummer. There we go, I was finally able to do that one. I got 12 seconds, I'm gonna do one out to the side. Oh, of course my timer goes off. Oh, there we go. All right, it's a little bit of a weirder one. How do you guys feel about that one? It's a little bit tricky, honestly. I'm figuring out which one of my fingers I can't engage as much as my other ones. Or like, when I'm engaging these two, like how are my back two doing? Are we supposed to rest each time, reset each time, or drag the coins back? That's totally up to you, honestly. Um, these drills, like I said, are they're up for you to kind of manipulate and figure out exactly how you want to do them. If I, Toy around with it and let me know how it goes. If you drag it back and you feel like that does something for you, I would love to get that feedback. Um, I was kind of resetting and making my quarters a little bit wider than what they were before, or closer together. Um, 
maybe even like pretending that I have like a two finger pocket on them, or maybe it's like a full crimp or a nice open handed jug, whatever it might be. Uh, toy around with it. Let me know how it goes. All these drills are yours for the doing and for the taking. Anybody else? That one was fun. Awesome. I'm glad you guys are having fun today. I'm also having fun. This next one is probably my favorite drill. I'm not going to lie. All right. So this is when you're going to need both chairs, okay? Let's see. I pulled one back at a time, alternating side to time for like a good coordination job. Awesome. Uh, yeah, one thing that I really want all of you to take away from this is that in climbing, no part of our body should really ever not be engaged. If we're climbing with intention and we are climbing with um, with like passion and fervor, normally we get off the wall and we feel it because our entire body has been doing something. Um, so really try to think about that when we're doing these drills. Uh, let me see. All right. We are going to do something with two chairs. I'm super excited for this. So we're going to take the chairs and I'm setting mine up like this. And they're pretty much directly across from each other. We are going to, so there are three levels to this. Wherever you are at, it is okay. So the first one that I want you to try is just holding a specific position. So you're just going to take your foot up on the chair. It's that like really tricky back flag position that we're trying to simulate here. We hold it, and if, if that's what you want to do is just hold and try and balance that, that is all good. Um, that's really, it's really going to keep you literally on your toes and on your fingers. Um, the next one that you can try doing is pushing up as if you are reaching for a hold. So I was thinking about this like in a lot of sport climbing when you get into some pretty fun movement. You can feel horizontal and like you're reaching up as much as you can. So, you know, you can start like a little bit bent and then with your leg and your arm, push up, try to find that hold. You might even match your feet. So that's one way of doing it. The like, the big like take home the prize way of doing it is pretty fun. We're going to try to transfer chairs um, doing that movement. Let's see if I have a successful one. Nothing like falling on my butt on a live stream feed. Let's see. <laughs> Man, that's the first time that chair has fallen when doing this. Of course. There we go. All right. So it's a little bit interesting. It's a lot of coordination. It's a lot of movement. Um, play around with it. Please make sure to give feedback or let me know what's going on. Um, I wish I could see all of you right now, but I can't. Um, so all I got is your words. So let me know how that goes. I'm going to grab some water and then I'm going to try it a couple more times. Mm -hmm. All right. 
right, how we doing out there? It's fun. It feels like risky. I haven't been up high on something in a while. It's so fun to do, honestly. Even hold, just holding that is... like volume climbing honestly <laughs> you can get some cool drop knees in there save one of chairs for this one is there an alternate way to get this movement sure let me think about it you might be able to use <laughs> Eden let me think about that one um, maybe like an edge of a couch maybe like a couch and a chair um, you can try it on a step stool, maybe. Um, Eden, that's a very good question. If something comes to my mind, I will, uh, I will make sure to let you know. I would say find things around your house. All right, we're gonna move on to the next thing if nobody else has anything to add in the chat. We have uh, some we have some rose moons. Okay, I have a bench I'm putting my foot on and reach over my couch. That's perfect. If you have a stable enough table, Eden, maybe you can use that table in something else. Or even um, kitchen counters. You can do kitchen counters. All right, we're gonna do one more thing. It's gonna be three on both sides. Um, rose moves are pretty cool. If you don't know what a rose move is, rose moves are, if we're on the wall and we're perched up and our next hold is all the way over there, but in the sequence, it's our opposite hand that needs to go. It's when we rotate in and go all the way through to get that next hold and then come out. So we are going to do that, but we're not going to be standing. We're going to be on all fours for this. And we're going to get into what we call the Hindu push-up position or the downward dog position like this. So normally, we would do a push-up like that. However, we're going to rotate. So both knees go to the left. Let me see. What's the best angle? Here we go. Both knees go to the left. And then we're going to take our head and our hand and try and rotate through. If you're having like a little bit of trouble with this, if that's a too hard of a position, try it on your knees. Just rotating those legs in. You might not be able to get the full range of motion for that, um, but this is uh, kind of a funky move that we don't get to do all the time. So have a little fun with it. We're gonna do three of them on both sides. So rotate, rotate, rotate. Remember your knees direct where the hand is going and we're reaching through the opposite one. So kind of the same as a quad rotation. However, we're gonna be doing it in the push-up position. So here we go, let's do three on both sides. I get pretty low all the way to the ground. Two more, here we go. Nice. Whew. We're getting a fun workout today. It's not your normal workout. Um, all right. Get a little bit of water once you're done with those. And we're gonna go into our overhang. All right, this is our this is our last one, let's see. Perfect, we're right on time. Um, 
This overhanging one is the last one. It's going to be the most uh, core coordination that you've done so far. Um, you're going to need chairs. Uh, you're gonna need one chair the entire time. Eden, don't worry, you're not standing on them. You're just sitting on them. Um, and then you're gonna need the second one for the second part of this. Uh, you're also gonna need that book that you were using before. So, oh, actually, you need, okay, you need both chairs. You need a book, you need a towel, you need all four of those things. So just eliminate the quarters, use all the rest of the materials that we're using. Um, so, when we are on an overhang, it's quite interesting. When we're on an overhang, it's interesting because we, um, we normally climb with our legs on vert and slab, right? Like that's our big muscle focus is putting all the weight right here. The further back we get kicked back, uh, the less our legs are able to engage. And all we have is our toes, our fingers, and our core, right? So we are using this to be um, trying training how to stay close to the wall how to really engage that core when we're on overhangs um, and just getting more comfortable in weird positions. Uh, so for this first one, you're just gonna sit on your chair so the back is next to you and you're gonna just balance on your butt with your feet out. You can hold this if you don't have the greatest balance today, that's okay. So the first one that you can do is hold this the second one you can do is hold it like this or like this, or we're going to go back into that adventure rock pose. You can bring your right uh, right elbow to your right knee and try to get that left hand back, straightening that left leg. That's like the best angle for me to do this at. Let's see. There we go. Just hold it there. See what it feels like. See how long you can hold it for. Switch sides a little bit. Um, I know this is gonna, this is a weirder class to do online because it's all about you toying around with the positions. There's no real uh, prescribed reps for what you're doing. So that feedback that you guys are giving in the chat is perfect. That's exactly what we're looking for. Go ahead and just mess around with those positions. See which ones you're able to uh, accomplish. I'm gonna have a core, <laughs> core is burning today, you guys. Oh. It's a little bit tricky. It's a little bit tricky. See how long you can just hold. Maybe try it one hand at a time. You can even bring that leg up one hand at a time. So any of those three, remember we have like the hand on the bottom, we have our hands either up or behind us, and then we have the Adventure Rock logo. Um, toy around with all three of those at the same time. Put one hand on the bottom of your chair, one hand up, one hand in front of you, uh, two hands on there, but bringing one leg up and then reaching with the other one. See what feels good to you. Um, yeah. I'm giving you guys just stuff to do for when you're bored at home, honestly. This is the fun part. I can't wait to see photos roll in of people doing this. Send them to me on email, jacob at adventurerock.com. Send them to Adventure Rock's direct messages or tag us on Instagram. Uh, we, I would love to see what everybody looks like doing these. Okay, we're gonna move on to our next progression of this. We're going to need that second chair, all right? So for this one, you're gonna need your towel and the second chair. We're balancing on our butts again. I'm gonna roll this towel up really quick so that it's nice and Good and comfortable for me to hold on to. Um, 
For this, what we are going to do is we're going to bike the second chair. If you don't know what a bike is, you have one of your feet on top of the chair and one of the feet on the bottom of the chair. So there's a couple different things that we use uh, when we're on overhang to really stay tight into the wall using our feet when our legs have kind of gone by the wayside just because of how steep it is. We can bike, which is exactly what I showed you. You can toe in really hard if that's all you have, really tiny holes using those toes as strong as possible. We have heel hooks, which we will get to in a moment, or we just have cutting feet. Um, so we are gonna work on biking really quick. So we're balancing on the edge of this chair again. One foot goes on top, the other one goes on the bottom. And we're gonna try and lean back as much as we can. And you can put as much pressure onto this chair as possible, the one that your feet are on. The harder you squeeze, the more pressure that's gonna take off of the rest of you. You're gonna take that towel, this is kind of the second progression. So the first thing that you can do is just sit there and hold this as long as you can. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. Second thing you can do is take that towel and do a towel pull up, that simulation that we've been doing. So you take it, And remember, we're not letting that lower back touch the chair. Sometimes my back, my back was dabbing. That's not what we want. We really want to uh, engage that core and stay up with it. So go ahead, if you're doing the towel pull-ups, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm going to do five towel pull-ups nice and slow. I'm gonna try to. Uh, I'm trying to do a lot of things today. Uh, it's all right. Success is all about failing a little bit. And we have all these drills that are brand new to us. Uh, we're just coming up with them. The more we fail, the better we get at them. So feel free to take some risk. So I'm trying to do five really slow towel pull-ups, kick back and biking as hard as I can. Uh, and then those of you that are just holding the position, I want you to just go ahead and hold it until I'm done doing that. So it's a little bit of accountability back and forth. Here we go. I'm going to put my right foot on top this time. today's practice. I'm having so much fun with you guys. All right. That is our butt balance on a chair with the towel pull up and the bike. We only have one more thing. And I always save the most fun ones for last. Those of you that have been in my other classes, you know, I only say fun things for last. Um, we don't listen. If we are, if we're in just training mode, there's no reason why we shouldn't try to become better at something, right? Um, right now, because we don't have the gym, we're all just trying to keep like at least a base level. When we're doing these technique classes, I'm gonna challenge you all to try and not just create a base for yourself, but try to become better at a specific skill as, as much as we can. Um, I think that's kind of a positive way to go about this. Um, we're gonna use the book that we had, and we're really gonna work on our heel hooking skills on overhand. Um, I know that sounds a little bit hard to do, but it's okay. We're gonna have fun trying. What's gonna happen is with this book, you're gonna take both your heels and you're gonna compress it as much as you can. You're gonna squeeze it together. You're gonna do the butt balance on the chair. Eden, now that I'm thinking about it, you can totally do things like this on the ground as well if your chairs aren't that sturdy. You can put like a small pillow underneath you um, or just use the ground itself. And then if you have like the edge of a couch, you can always bike that. Um, so these butt balance ones can be done on the ground as well. I like the chair because um, understanding our body and space and how that feels is a really great thing to know how to do. It's not just about uh, knowing where your body is on the wall. If we can master knowing where we're on on the wall with knowing where our body is in space, our movement becomes so much more fluid. Um, so we're gonna compress this together with both of our heels. And then we're gonna do a towel pull up at the same time. 
the next step of this, the most fun one that I definitely say for last for all of you, is um, you're gonna try to do a seated. So you're sitting on that seat, you're balanced. You're gonna try to compress that book together, but we're also gonna try to do a crunch at the same time. So that's what this looks like. We balance together. So we have our heels and we're compressing as hard as we can. We're gonna do five of these. Those are pretty difficult, I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, but it's okay, it's Sunday, we're taking chances. We're, it's a brand new class. All of you were in our first uh, movement class online. How fun is that? All right, so here we go. We're gonna try doing five slow, controlled crunches. And those of you that are just holding the book and doing a towel pull up at the same time, I want you to do five towel pull ups nice and slow while we try to bang out these crunches. So let's start by compressing. This is our last drill that we're doing together. Thank you all so much for joining us. Let's do it. All right, five. Two more, come on. <laughs> oh, I failed a little bit at the end. That's okay. There we go. That is our movement class for this week. Um, next week might look a little bit different based on what happened today and any feedback I get from you all. Um, remember, we have classes every day of the week. We have yoga going on constantly. I teach a strength class on Tuesdays, and then I have a footwork and a power class on Thursdays. That I have this one on Sundays. Anything you guys need, you all mean the world to us at Adventure Rock. Reach out, email me, jacob at adventurerock.com. My Instagram is at Jacob D. Bach. Make sure to tag us in posts and photos. Please give us feedback on this class. I would appreciate it immensely. I hope you all had fun today. I was having a little bit of a rough one before this, and then I started doing it, and uh, you guys have been a blast to be with. So thank you all so much. I'll stay on for about a minute or two longer to answer any questions, answer any comments, and then we'll uh, have a good Sunday together. I didn't ask people's pump up songs today. Ah. Thank you, Kay. Kay, did you enjoy this class? You've been at all of mine. It's been awesome. Awesome. Even while falling over. That's like the most fun part about this. Normally I'm like, oh, let's do push-ups or whatever. But today we got to fall and have fun. I'm glad you, I'm glad we all failed together. Awesome, thank you, Eden. Thank you so much. All right, everybody, you've been awesome. We'll see you on Tuesday. Ezra, thank you for coming, buddy. I miss you. We're going to have team soon. All right, everybody, see you Tuesday. Strength at 6 o'clock. Have a good one.